What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life and TV. I'm Poetry. You are here for Travel and Talk Tuesday. I am on my way to work. This clock says 7.42. I think my phone clock says something different. For some reason, every few months, the car clock slows down. Like I, I reset it every month to match the time that the phone clock says. And, uh, it's slowing down. It's, it's almost like is the government speaking in my time or something? I don't know. Cause I'm like, I think all the clocks in my house match my clock in the car. I be getting out the house and I be thinking, dog, it took me that long to get into the car. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my way to work. Yesterday, y'all, um, I didn't put up ready to love recap. I was tired. When I got home from work, it was almost 9 p.m. Had a long day. Most of it was driving just I mean not actually doing physical work but driving <sighs> just driving I swear um that's why I told y'all when I got this little promotion that was gonna be the biggest thing having to use my car every day and how far it is to drive like I work in what they call Windermere area okay and but my assignment, I have to go all the way over by Walt Disney World in order to deliver. That motherfuckers ain't close. That motherfuckers ain't close. Now, like, from home, I took, Disney usually takes me like 15, 20 minutes to get home. It took me 40 something minutes last night. I was tired. I came home, I went straight to my room. Didn't nobody cook no food, so there wasn't no dinner cooked. I told you everybody always depending on me to do every damn thing. Wasn't no dinner cooked. <laughs> Kayla met me at the door though, at least gave me a hug. But she actually wasn't meeting me at the door. She just happened to be downstairs. And the animals hadn't been fed. So I had to feed them, take Vito out, you know, feed them. And then, then Kayla came down. She probably was coming out at that moment to do what I had just did though. Ain't no telling. I don't know. Um, when she came down, she saw me. She's like, I didn't know you was home. You know, gave me a big hug and everything. But, wasn't nothing in the kitchen to eat. Wasn't nobody, nobody cook nothing. And I was tired. So I went up to my room. I said, I'm going to lay down for an hour. I'm going to get up at 10. At least grab me a salad or something to eat. Record the video real quick. And go back to bed. When I woke up, it was this morning. At 7.24 a.m. So I did like a whole bath type of thing this morning. Luckily, you know, I was still you know, kind of clean from yesterday. No, no, but I did a whole bath this morning. <laughs> I clean under my own, wash my own pits, wash my the tits and, and, and the, you know, the, the nether regions. I did all that stuff this morning. Got dressed, just brushed my ponytail down. I got caught in the rain yesterday, so my ponytail is like dry now. And it's supposed to rain again today at 12. And I know I'm going to be outside again. So it wasn't no point me putting no, nothing in my hair because it'd be creeping out in my eyes and things. Hopefully today is not as bad as yesterday. That's the hope. Um, so, yeah. Whew. So, I'll get to Ready to Love reunion. It was boring. I, I probably could tell y'all right now. But y'all ain't here for the Ready to Love reunion. Half the time, y'all ain't here for the Traveling Talk. I've lost a lot of viewers over the past uh, two months. I mean, like, subscription numbers decrease and viewers like i used to like traveling talk used to be my like my most popular video surprisingly other than him and um most of my regulars they don't even come around no more i've been seeing them around the tube you know on other channels but they don't swing by here no more but that's all right it's still all love still all love i still got a lot of my a lot of my regulars still i guess i say most of them a lot of my regulars still y'all for I love my newbies you know people who just swing through and say hi I love all y'all for real um what I was gonna say but yeah your girl's turn your girl's turn um we still on the hunt for a house um this the, the, the lawn people the lawn guy man let me tell y'all so 
I do right ass. It's been raining season. It's been raining every single day here because it's hurricane season. It ain't even, it ain't even get to the thick of hurricane season. It's coming up on hurricane season. So it's been raining every day here. Do cut our grass that Friday, right? And then by the time Monday rolled around, the grass was back up to like mid cow. That's how you were at. First of all, he cuts the grass for me. You own a riding lawnmower. lawnmower. I said lawnmower. Lawnmower. You own a riding lawnmower. And how you missing blades of grass? I mean, we got like short grass, tall grass. Grass just leaning over. It's First of all, when you cut grass that's been wet with a lawnmower, it does not necessarily cut them because one, your, day, your blades are probably getting dull. And if you're doing this as a business and you steady going out there cutting people's grass that's been wet, your blades are dull. So that's all it's going to do is push your grass for, uh, over instead of cutting it. And that's basically what happened. A lot of our grass was just pushed over. So when the sun come out tomorrow, the grass stand back up like, hey girl, hi, hey, I'm still here. And it's all raggedy looking. Now last time, he did his cleanup a little better. He had his little weed, his, his blower. He even had somebody with him after he told me that he worked by himself. You know, he did all that. So I was like, I'm not using this motherfucker no more. My lawnmower was broke. That's what's a why, you know, we having these issues. My mama, actually, I used to cut the grass, and if it's the reason my mama took over, like, I guess it's her weekly exercise or whatever. So she been cutting the grass, but the handle broke. My lawnmower was, you know, not old, but they don't make things like they used to. You know, they used to make products like they was Tonka trucks, and this stuff would never break. No. They don't make them like they used to no more. I got a trash bag stuck to the front of my car. I hate that. Um, so the handle broke off. So then I have an electric lawnmower, so in order to engage it, you gotta pull up the handle. But well, that's the part that broke. And the company don't make that design anymore. They got now it's like handlebars. I think it's stupid walking around like that. Anyway, okay, so we had to pay for lawn service. Now I done paid twice now. I said I wasn't going to use no more, but I used him. He called me because he cut the neighbor's grass. You know, you know that's the one of the worst thing. You, your neighbors get all their grass cut, and then your grass looking like shit. That's how mine was looking. But it was looking like shit from the last time he cut the grass. But he called. He was like, you want me to cut your grass for you? And I was thinking, I still ain't bought this damn lot more yet. My grass is getting really high. It was getting almost knee high. It was between mid-calf and, and knee at this point. I was like, fine, go ahead. He's like, I can come out there tomorrow. Now, he called on Sunday. No, he called on 4th of July. He said he can come out there tomorrow, which would be the 5th of July. 5th of July came, rode around. Was he there? No. And I was like, you know what? See, this is why I wasn't going to use this dude. Because remember the first time that happened, he called me and said he was coming. He didn't show up when he was supposed to. Yeah, we had this same issue. And I was like, I don't like using people like that. Giving my money to people like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then, uh, the six came around. Did he show up? Nope. I didn't call him back. Nothing. I'm at the crib chilling on Thursday. All I heard said I heard somebody in my yard. Baby, this motherfucker started cutting my grass already. Now, I was already like, I'm not going to fuck with this dude. I ain't going to call him back or nothing. He just showed the hell up on Thursday, started cutting the grass. Got halfway through, he going to text me and say, hey, I'm cutting your grass. So now you know you got to pay the motherfucker because they have to doing a damn job. So I let him go ahead and do it. He texts me a picture of the front yard. Because that's what he used to do, text pictures to see if the job is done. And then you pay him. Well, I didn't let him text me. Well, he never texted me pictures of the backyard before I actually paid him. I saw the front yard was done. I went ahead and sent him his money on the zip. Bam. Then I looked out the back window and I was like, is the grass cut? I don't like cut in the back. My, my mama, when we found out that the guy was out there, she would to unlock the back gate so he can get in. I went downstairs. It's cut at. You know, like I said, grass leaning over, some of it ragged. All around the edges of the yard, there's grass. He didn't clean up shit in the backyard. Plus, he didn't even cut some stuff. Like, around the fence line, when you first come in the gate, he ain't cut none of that. Along the house, he ain't cut trim none of that. None of that. All look a damn mess. I'm like, I, I, I can't use him again. And don't show the fuck up at my house. Not got no nail goddamn time. You show up this motherfucking time, because you're going to be cutting it for free. So... 
So that's that. That on that. Okay, so I'm gonna tell y'all what's going on with my business. That's probably why I lost videos because I talk about my business all damn time. Survive Beauty. Since I've been back from St. Louis, did the pop ups, I had maybe like three orders. Those three orders, when I checked my chat tracking, they took forever to get to these people. Forever. So I, I'm sitting out on a sincere apology. But um, that was the postal service. I could actually literally blame it on that. It was the postal service. But they packages went out really, really, really late. So, um, but I haven't had any new business uh, sales since then. And uh, actually, you know, I'm not mad at that. I'm just saying, because I'm system and tired. I've been tired, y'all. Oh, my goodness. I've been. I have been in a state. I can't even say that I've been physically exhausted or nothing like that. I have been in um, going through a move. I can't even say it's a manic episode or depressive episode. Just a mood change. You know, I, I suffer from mood disorder too. Just a mood change that I just can't can shake. All through the day, I just feel like being la lazy. Just like a straight lazy bumish. You know what I'm saying? And then uh. Somewhere around 2 a.m., my body wake back up and I'm inspired with thoughts and shit. So I guess I am kind of tired too because then I'm up at 2 and I can't get my ass back to sleep. I woke up at 3 some this morning though. I had a bad dream. The weirdest shit. I have the worst nightmares. Okay. So I'm in this seemingly third world looking type of country. Me, my mama, Kina. And there was a few other people with us, but I don't know who these people were now. Should have wrote all their names down when I woke up. We all party and kicking it. Oh, my friend Tanisa. I ain't seen her since high school. We've been out kicking it. Kicking it, y'all. And all of a sudden, my mama goes somewhere. I don't know where the fuck she went. Now, in the dream, in the, te in the time sequence, time is going on and on. We still at this same party, this street party, and it's now been two weeks, and my mama still didn't show back up. But not only has my mama not showed back up, Tanisha gone too. And this Tanisha, not my, my, not my goddaughter, because she may be watching this, is like my friend from high school. And um, I started inquiring, like, where they at, you know, checking their Instagram and their Facebooks, if they post, they hadn't posted nothing. In a while, and I'm like, we really getting concerned. So once I really started inquiring, where the freak they at? People in the party area, in the atmosphere, and the surroundings start disappearing. It was almost like it was staged for us to believe that we like, you know, how in the Wizard of Oz they went to the poppy fields and they thought they were somewhere else. They was all happy and high and shit like that. It was kind of like that. The people were keeping us there, happy and excited. But once I really start tuning in, the people were kind of missing. You know, people start disappearing. So, I started asking around. I'm going into this candy store. This is a candy store that I grew up in. But the owner wasn't uh, Roosevelt. It was the name of the guy who was at the store. It wasn't him. It was uh, this guy that was like Kena's uh, director at the Boys and Girls Club that she used to go to. He's now the mayor of... Is he the mayor of Ferguson? No, he's the mayor of Will. Okay. And, um... Yeah, he was there. He was running the store. Uh, all the sodas and stuff was hot. You know, I'm trying to give me my, my St. Louis best sodas and everything. Everything in the store was hot. The chips, like, was it either expired or had, like, one bag left on the shelf or whatever. So, first, I'm uh, going like that. And I'm asking him, hey, Reggie, you see my mama? He was like, no. But it seemed like everybody, you know, when I asked the question, everybody in the store stopped moving. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, have you seen my girl? And I'm showing them pictures and everything. And they're like, no, 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 no. Okay, so, um, I just start asking people around the neighborhood, hey, have you seen this lady? She's short, my height, got super long locks, like purple. And the dude was like, yep, yeah, see. He said, yes and no. I was like, I don't know. You mean yes and no? Well, apparently he said he's seen her, but he's seen her in this paper called Red, uh, Red alert. I can't remember right now. Red media. The red media. So, my mind instantly went to red media was uh, sex trafficking. 
type paper. And they just how they advertise who they got, you know. Um, I didn't bother to think whether or not Red Medium was like a paper that was announced people who had been deceased. I just knew it's the, the, them being like the sex traffic attack thing. So once he said it, he walked off, and then like everybody turned away and walked around. I'm like, okay, they got my mama. They got my mama. So I go in and tell Reggie, you know, the store manager, he like, hey, don't go bring it in here. I don't, I don't, we don't want to hear that name in here. You know what I'm saying? They real nervous and shit. So I go back out and tell the rest of my crew, my mama's friend, she's been to six for a few years now. She was in this dream. Um, and then her other friend, it was real close. She talked to all the time. They've been both in this dream. Like, tell me, hey, they got my mama, you know? So they like, okay, what we got to do? We got to go home and we got to try to figure out where she is. So we call them the phone, ain't no answer. We call the phone, ain't no answer. We call Kena. Now she ain't answering. But Kena was just with us though. Like I said, everybody just slowly disappearing and stuff like that. So I'm freaking out, I'm panicking. So I go home and I don't even know what I was going home for. Oh, I was at my house back in St. Louis at this particular time when I went home. And I go into Kena's room and there's this white spider on her bed. So I grab the bug spray. Like, I'm gonna go get this spider, go get this spider. I don't let spiders out. I ain't friendly like that. Go get the spider. Go, go, go spray on this spider. And I start spraying it. It goes under the bed. I see it go under the bed. I'm like, oh, motherfucker, you're going to die. You're going to die today. So now I'm spraying this spider. Don't t don't ask me what this got to do with the original dream, but this is all one dream. I'm spraying this spider. And the spider uh, jumps up to the ceiling. All of a sudden, I see a web going up. So I'm spraying the web. I, I'm spraying so much bug spray. I'm surprised I'm not choking. That it turns white. You know what I'm saying? Everything turns white. There's a web and everything. All of a sudden, that motherfucker jumped down at me out the web. The web like opened up and it come like a big and flat trap in my face. And then I, and it like landed on my chest, what have you. Like, but I'm underneath King of Blankets and I'm like flipping the blankets and screaming. And I'm like, get out of me, get out of me. And I'm screaming. And that's how I woke up. I woke up flipping my blankets like that. Swear to God, I woke up flipping my blankets like that. Child, I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. I was panicking. The cat was on my bed. Looking at me like, bitch, what's wrong with you? I think I kicked her off. I remember her hitting the floor and she got back in the bed like, and she slipped out of sleep at the foot of my bed. I was like, what the fuck? I, I don't know, but it was spider. But now I'm looking around at my ceiling, my real ceiling, trying to see if there's a spider coming down. And now I Googled red media to see if there was a real thing. The only thing I found was red media paper. They make paper. I saw red media distributed. I was like, are they masking? They said they distribute. I was like, who the fuck is red media? Because I'll be feeling like my dreams, y'all, is somebody's life that's actually happening. It may not be my own life, but it's somebody's life that's happening. Somebody just got abducted, and there's a secret paper that's going around letting everybody know who they got available to sell or traffic or whatever they're going to do. That's what my things, my thoughts be. So somewhere somebody got this damn spider that dropped on their ass, too, and they just freaked out. So I doze back off. I went back to sleep. My dream didn't continue. It was some new, not new place. Like, um, apparently, I've been here in my dream before. It was a road that we go down and we travel like this road. We walk across, walk by this um, water thing, but we couldn't walk across it. We had to drive. And there's people working on the bridge. So only half of the bridge is open. That's why you couldn't drive. We couldn't drive across that part. We had to still walk that part that you're supposed to drive on and get to the other side well we do that our car still stuck on the other side but we did it anyway we walked through but somehow the river had flooded so now the road that we need to walk down is completely flooded child y'all know i can't swim my mama can't swim my daughter can't swim and the guys who were up working the bridge now we see them behind us with shovels and shit like that and they trying to force us to go across this damn bridge and I'm like, but I can't swim. So we basically get forced into the water, but before we actually hit the water, I woke up again. So went back to sleep, forced myself to go back to sleep. Woke up, I mean, went back to sleep and another dream just happened. And in this particular dream, um, I say this is familiar to me again. It's going through this little walkway through the woods. Like I say, it's the same waterway that we had to drive by that was there. We in some little podunk town. 
I remember going to this town in my dream at least three, four different occasions. That's what I'm thinking this shit exists for real somewhere. And um, they got the best breakfast. Um, so we go to this little town. I want to say this little town is like from the military base that I used to be stationed in California. I want to say I forgot about the wind. I want to say that's where that little town is at. I don't, I'm not sure though. So we go through this little town and we go go sightseeing and everything because nobody in the town, nobody nowhere. And so we come up on this little house that seemingly looks like a museum. And some little kids with us. I'm not sure who these kids were, but they, these kids was in the house with us. They was part of our group. But I'm not sure who these kids belong to. We walked through this house and each room was set up like a different little city or a different little department. We had the military room. So I went in there with all the Marine Corps stuff. They had all the little figurines and the flags and the boots and all that stuff. So as we're going through there, one of the people in the house was like, well, we ain't got to leave. I'm like, what you mean we ain't got to leave? Because nobody is in this town. The house is all set up. There's food stocked and everything. So we like, we basically live here rent free. Nobody's ever going to come check. You know, so we pick up the phone. The phone works. And there's messages on the phone. This is like automatic plan. First was like, welcome to such and such, and this, then the third. And then all of a sudden, we, the last message said, get out of our damn house. And we get threatened to be killed if we don't get out of the house. And um, Keena and my mama, who are there in this particular dream, be like, we ain't going nowhere. This is our house now. We claim to stake claim on this. And they find that there's supposed to be some other plots um, that we can go to. So they go out the pension. I'm in the house trying to gather all the stuff that I can gather. I don't know why we're taking these people's stuff. Well, I'm trying to gather all that I can gather, right? And we go through. Um, I, I go out the house to look for them. Um, and I got to go through these little wooded areas, whatever, right? And it used to be an open road. But now there's a barbed wire going down the middle of the road. And there's this big otter. Kenan thought it was a chipmunk. I thought it was an otter, but it was huge, and it was trapped up in the doggone barbed wire, and I couldn't help it get free, and it was steady trying to get itself free and tangling itself up some more, so I was freaking out, I wanted to save the fucking otter, and then if you look down a little further, there was like a cow stuck down in this barbed wire, the barbed wire didn't exist, and you can see the barbed wire only went so far, right, so I back up, and I'm like, let me go get some help. And the, the kids that was there, they now with this other family. And the, um, and we found this, it was called Cage Family. We found this family and they was going to help me go find them. Go help me go clear out the stuff. So we going up to the road. They found another way. All the stairs are gone. The stairs that used to be there are gone. Like somebody just dug them out. And he was like, well, how did you get to the road? Now, my old childhood neighborhood. It's in the hood. It's in the city. But this is the world we travel. We're driving through the alleyways to get to these roads um, over there. And we get over there, and he could see, like, the barbed wire it only lasts so long. But every road that gets you to the roads that ain't no barbed wire so we can go down and go around has been, like, gutted out, dug up. You can't get down that mountaintop, things like that. We just stuck, y'all. Stuck. And all of a sudden, the day of months last starts to happen. And then I woke up. It was 7 24 a.m. this morning. I had a series of bad dreams. My heart been racing all morning. It's like when I dream like that, I feel it. I like I go through every emotion that they going through in the dream. And usually like I know it's me, I think, in the dream. I never see me. But I always see my family members and there's always some other people. You know, it'll be familiar neighborhoods and stuff. It's the weirdest shit. I know that none of that make no damn sense. That's what I, that's my whole point. My dreams don't make no doggone sense. They be weird, but they be terrified. People are here dying and getting caught up and stuff and lost. And I'm wondering who in the red media and kidnap somebody. Who done put this barbed wire down these roads that's trying to kill these animals. It just, it don't make no sense. Anyway, child. Business. I'm about to do a little pop-up shop, y'all. I told y'all I was going to never do it. I told my cousins and my mama that I wouldn't do it again. I was like, if y'all hear me say I'm going to do it again, tell me no. 
And then I said, I'm going to do it again. And they was like, okay, cool, I'm in. I'm saying, I'm going to do one right here in Orlando. There's a, a group of people that's already got an event going on with pop-up jobs. And um, the cost for me to join in is almost the same cost it was for me to rent the spaces in Atlanta and uh, St. Louis. And there would be other vendors. And therefore, there should be other... There might be a nice crowd of people that can, you know, buy some stuff. So I'm gonna try it again. This time, my plan will be more organized. <sighs> First of all, I need to stop trying to create new stuff while I don't have the other stuff already, you know, mass produced. So I'm trying to change the lip gloss line, give it some fall colors. Um, I got another face mask that I want. For acne prone skin, um, I got the Asian, um, uh, the one that firms your face up and you know, anti aging uh, mask, and then also I have uh, the detoxify one. That's the three I have right now. All right, I'm at work, it's apparently everybody's late, so let me uh get here and start work. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.